Hi everyone, thanks for joining me for another installment of First Chapter Friday. The book that I'm going to be reading from today, I am really excited to share with you. It is a book called Winter House, and it is about a girl named Elizabeth Summers who lives with her mean aunt and uncle, Aunt Purdy and Uncle Burlap, and she arrives home from school around the winter vacation to find a note taped to their door saying they went away. Here's a train ticket. Hop on the train and go to this hotel by yourself. And the name of the hotel is Winter House. So Elizabeth gets on the train and she brings with her not very much stuff, but a few books to read. Elizabeth is a huge bookworm, which is something I loved about this book. She's always um, reading and then referencing the books that she's read, which was really fun because they are real books. So it's kind of like there's a little hidden book list inside the book, which is very exciting. So she goes to this hotel called Winter House, which is amazing. It's like 13 stories high. There's a candy factory inside. There's so much to do, lectures, skating, um, just all kinds of stuff. She makes a friend there named Freddie and they have a very adventurous and mysterious time. They get sort of involved with a mystery that is unfolding at Winter House. So some really cool things about this book are that inside the book, there are a bunch of puzzles. Elizabeth and Freddie both love word games like anagrams and word ladders. So there's a bunch of those in there. There's some other puzzles that they use to solve the mystery. So it adds a sort of extra layer to the book because you get to read the book and you get to work on the puzzles a little bit, which is really cool. And as I said before, because Elizabeth loves to read so much, there's a whole bunch of book titles in here, which are sort of like suggestions for other things you could read. But mostly it's just this really great mystery that takes place in this amazing imaginative hotel and this nice friendship that unfolds between Elizabeth and Freddie. So I really enjoyed this book. And in fact, I was lucky enough to be able to have a conversation with the author of this book, Ben Gooderson. He and I spoke a little bit and we recorded that conversation and that will be on AADL TV as well. So that is something that you could watch if you want to learn a little bit more about how he got the idea for Winter House and um, some of the things that he was thinking about when he wrote it and puzzles and other kinds of things like that. So I am going to read the first chapter of Winter House. Okay. Chapter one, Winter House. <clears throat> Part one, far to the north and plenty of snow, show, shot, soot, boot, book. So each chapter starts with a word ladder like that, um, where the first word and the last word are significant. Chapter one, a troubling note, node, mode, maid, mate, gate. When Elizabeth Summers tugged open the gate to her aunt and uncle's yard and saw an envelope duct taped to the front door of the shabby house, she shared with them, she knew it was bad news. The porch steps, which her uncle Burlap never kept clean, were slick with snow and ice. And so Elizabeth stepped up carefully set down her school backpack and slid her hood from her head with a wet shake. She already had a pretty good idea of what the note inside the envelope would say as she plucked it from the door and then opened it. We informed you several times we would be going on a three week getaway and you would not be staying alone while we were gone. So you won't be surprised to find this letter. The house is locked tight. There's a ticket for the 620 train north in this envelope. Catch that train, and when you get off in the morning at Sternhaven, there will be a ticket waiting for you at the bus station. Get on the bus that goes to the Winter House Hotel. They will be expecting you. 
Here's $3 in case you need anything on the way. You'll get another ticket to come back after the new year. Don't cause trouble for anyone. None of your nonsense. Elizabeth studied the train ticket. 6.20 was in three hours, the first three hours of her 24 days of Christmas vacation. And as they had promised, after lecturing her for the past two weeks about how they were leaving for Christmas and Elizabeth would be sent away, her aunt and uncle really were gone. Elizabeth glanced at the street through her foggy glasses. The snow was falling harder. A plastic grocery bag hung on the doorknob. Elizabeth peeked inside and saw it was filled with three of her shirts, two pairs of socks, a pair of pants, and some undergarments. She examined the three grimy dollar bills she'd been given, all the while imagining Aunt Purdy peeling them from her coin purse with her thin fingers and reluctantly smoothing them into the envelope. In Elizabeth's imagination, Uncle Burlap was standing beside her and eyeing the money doubtfully. And even this amount was too much. She let this picture fade away like the steam of her breath in the chill air. Elizabeth read the note once more. She stuffed it into her jacket pocket with the money and the ticket and then unzipped her backpack. From the bottom of it, beneath the four paperbacks the school librarian had allowed her to check out for winter break, and her own volume of Anne of Green Gables. She removed a pen and a small notepad. The notepad was spiral bound along its top edge, green covered and worn with creases. The sort of pad a waiter might use to take your order at a restaurant. Elizabeth flipped it open and on the fifth page, entry number 43 on her list of reasons why I do not like my aunt and uncle she wrote, because they are sending me to a hotel in the middle of nowhere during Christmas with no money and hardly any clothes. She returned the notepad to its place, then put the plastic grocery bag inside her pack and zipped it closed. She was about to leave, but found herself staring at the strip of duct tape that had held the envelope, her breath rising high and tight in her chest and her eyes beginning to water. And then, before she realized what she was doing, she slammed her palm against the plywood door. The sound, a sharp thwack, like the noise of a book dropped on a wooden floor, startled Elizabeth, made her wonder just what had gotten into her. She looked around to see if anyone had been watching, but all was silent, an empty street in the growing darkness, with the snow falling more heavily now. Elizabeth sighed, and picked up her backpack. Why can't I have my parents back, she thought. And then, because there were no friends she might possibly ask to stay with for three weeks and no chance of avoiding her aunt and uncle's anger if she didn't follow their instructions, Elizabeth turned to walk the mile and a half to the station and wait for the 620 train to Sternhaven. She hoisted her backpack onto her shoulders and retraced her steps to the gate and right as she stepped out of the yard and onto the sidewalk, the feeling came over her. She froze in place, wide-eyed, and wondered what was going to happen this time. Her heart began to beat quickly. All was silent, and then a loud crash sounded behind her. And that is the end of chapter one of Winter House. And if that sounds like something that interests you, um, a bookworm girl who loves to make lists, as you can learn in that first chapter there, um, who is going to go on this adventure to this unknown place. She's an orphan. She lives with her aunt and uncle. Um, and also, she loves puzzles. And if you love puzzles, this is a great book for you. But Another exciting thing about this book is that it is the first of a trilogy. So if you read it and you love it, you're in luck because you have two more books with Elizabeth Summers and her adventures at Winter House. So I hope you give it a try. It is a great read. It just, I just fell right into the world of Winter House and um, really didn't put the book down until I was finished. So give it a try. Thanks.